We should now be live streaming. Thank you, Lynn. Kia ora, everybody. Welcome to our emergency management meeting for Haraki. Uh, we'll start with a with a karakia. Uh, if Councillor Milner would like the honours. Happy to. Sorry, right, just scrolling down to the right place. Okay. Kia tau te rangamarie, kia whakapapa, panamu te moana, hei huarahi mā tātou i te rangi nei, aroha atu, aroha mai, tato i a tato katoa, huie taikie. Thank you, Paul. Do we have any apologies? No, I haven't received any apologies. Okay. No apologies to be recorded then. Uh, declarations of late, late items. Are there any declarations? What have we got there? No declarations of late, late items. Any declarations of interest? None, then we'll move on to um, item, oh, hang on. I've lost something here. Right, we'll move on to the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 15th of February, 2021. Could somebody please move that they are a true and correct record? Anybody there? Hello? What's happened? Can we have a mover and a seconder, please? Yep, happy to move. Click in my button and wave in. Thank, thank you, Paul. I've, I thought I'd lost everybody for a minute. Happy to second. Thanks, Rodney. Thank you. All right. Through you, Chair um, Philip, it may be um, appropriate that if everybody just has their microphone unmuted um, because the screen is sharing, you're probably not able to see the, the Zoom screen is clear with your one screen um, and you won't be able to see people waving and... Um, right. Okay. So if everybody goes unmuted, so um, is there any matters arising from those minutes? Moving through the pages. Page one, two, three, or oh, two, that's it. Thank you, Carol. Would I be able to have control of the uh, agenda or are you, are you the only one able to do that on my screen? Um, if I'm sharing the screen, it's only me. I can. Okay. Oh, look, we'll just have to work in tandem then and, and get through it as best we can. So <laughs> we move to the next uh, item on the agenda uh, public information management function quarterly update. I'll hand it over to um, if we could, uh, somebody could receive those minutes and we'll have a seconder, please. That, that report, sorry. I'll move that we receive the report. Thank you, Toby. Seconder. Yep. Thanks, Rodney. Okay. Right. I'll have, hand that over to you, Terry. Yeah, Terry gives her apologies. Um, so I'll be taking you through. Um, basically, I take the report as read. Um, since we last met, um, the team, the PIM team, is basically being. Uh, forming a new team there with um, Terry as the new PIM manager, and you can see the list of people involved. Um, we did a, an exercise uh, around a tsunami where it didn't involve the EOC activating, 
um, just to see what happened after as a result of um, the tsunami exercise that we did have. Um, we felt um, we need some improvements there. And um, you also will see in the report an outline, outline of her work program uh, in Appendix A there and just what the PIM priorities are. If there's any questions, over to you. If anyone has any questions, just um, fire away because... Um... There being none, um, any further comments, Peter? I just that at the moment under the lockdown, a lot of the uh, comms is coming from our local comms team. Um, it's only if this is prolonged that possibly things will switch over to uh, emergency management, but Brett will touch on that later in his report. Right. Mm. Okay, we move to um, item three. Philip, uh, uh, through you, Chair Philip, uh, um, yep. just on the work program there where you've got the tsunami awareness campaigns and the preparedness campaigns, is that a regional campaign or is that a local campaign? Are these just regional initiatives done by civil defence or locally through individual councils? I would say that would be probably just us um, improving our side of things um, in terms rather than being a regional approach. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Although the tsunami ones, I mean, they, they should be on the basis of the regional um, guidelines, shouldn't they, Brett? Yeah, they always take that into consideration. Yep, yep. Okay, moving on to the next um, item. What have we got on that one? Thanks for enlargening that, that for me, Carol, because I can't see sure. when it's this. <laughs> so the welfare function quarterly update, Brett. The welfare management report, yeah, I'll take, take that as read too. Um, Can we have a move and a seconder, please? So sorry. Thank you. Got a move and a seconder? I can. Yes. Yep, so moved. Thank you, Rodney. I must have missed that. Um, just in regards to the welfare side of things, obviously we're um, doing quite a bit at the moment with COVID, but uh, welfare was one of my um, things that always seemed to fall off the back of the bus as everything else has been moving along. So I've kind of dedicated Wednesdays now to, to really get my head into this welfare space and start working on that. So um, building up some better um, resources and teams and bits and pieces through welfare. Notice there's a bit of talking about that. There's also the welfare business plan, which is just a plan for your information going forward. What we intend to do, it refers back to the um, group welfare managers plan in there as well. Um, bit of a work plan at the end. Anyway, Carol, right at the very end, there's a... So is there any questions in regards to the welfare managers plan? Or report sorry so given that we're in into this uh, next period of COVID Brett uh, uh, some of those things that we've got in our plan are they are they being actioned now within the community uh yeah as contactless as we possibly can Phil because that's the problem with COVID <laughs> can't do anything face to face so um and it's fully engaged with all our all our um, NGOs in in our area, and we're keeping on top of them. We're in touch with them daily. We're in touch with the local welfare committee. Uh, got a Mel welfare committee meeting again tomorrow with them. Um, but yeah, we're we're doing doing what we need to here. It's been not been a civil defence led um, response. Yeah, we're, we're supporting as best we can. I'll just talk a little bit about, more about that later if you like. Yeah, I mean, I, I I joined in on the on the last one that we had, and um, the the whole um, the whole area seems to be coordinating quite well, and uh, there there doesn't seem to be as many food parcels being taken up yet, but that'll probably come. 
yeah. as this rolls on. Yeah. We're expecting something to happen, but we haven't had any requests for service in regards to food as yet. Um, yeah. There are people doing it, though. You know, our NGOs are doing it, but uh, we haven't had any. Those we we would only be responding if it comes down to they can't get it from anywhere else, and even then we will be trying to push them back to those um, NGOs that are helping us out anyway. Yeah. The other thing that's happening too is um, uh, it seems it seems to be a lot more communication coming through from group as well. So the last two days we've had uh, group Zoom meetings, um, so on a daily basis. Uh, I missed yesterday's, but I, I was in on the previous one. And it, it's really helpful to keep abreast of what, what functions that civil defence is actually doing and how, how they're handling it. So, um, right, we'll move to the next, um, next report, unless there's any other questions. Just one question on the, the shakeout. It was mentioned a couple of times in there. Can you just confirm the date? Because there's a couple of different dates noted from various reports. Me on the spot now, Paul. Um, <laughs> Shake out. September? It was mentioned as 15th of October, but then that's somebody else mentioned it as the 28th oh, of October. Oh, that's right. Yeah, um, there is a website. Uh, so if we do a search on uh, Shake Out, it should come up. Um, I'm not in my own office. I've pinched the, um, uh, put it up on my calendar. I'm in the uh, community services office because he's got a window and I can actually see Cat Gun. From here, so if anybody wants to do the shopping and wants to know what the lines like, just give me a call and I can let you know. But I'm just sitting in here because I've got actually some sunlight in here, so I, it's on my calendar in my other office. Sorry, I don't have the information in front of me, but you can do a search on Shake Out and there's a website to it. We've registered as a council to uh, be a part of that. Through you, through you, Chair, it's the 21st of October, the Shake Out exercise. Is it not the 28th? Uh, 21st, according to the website at the moment. Okay, yeah, we'll need to change that then. Because uh, it's, yeah. Put that in mind. Right, sorry about that. Thank you, Campbell. Uh, put called. Any further questions for Brett? None being, so we'll move on to the next report. Thank you, Carol. So the next board is the Emergency Management Officer's report. Which is uh, which is yours, Brett. Again, can I have a mover, please, for that report? So moved. Thank you, Toby. And a seconder, please. I'll second it. Yeah. Thank so, you. Uh, right. Over to so, you, Brett. So, yeah, just as before taking it as read, um, it's been really good, actually. Um, there's a number of things we could point out in the, in the report, but um, shake out again. I guess that date needs to be changed. Don't know where I've got 28th from, but um, it was the 21st. I'll, I'll have a look at that. I'll mark it on my calendar now so I can check that out. Um, Perhaps I'm just um, I'm not too sure which website Campbell's looking at, but it's a different one to mine, which says the 28th. So we will get back to you and just confirm the date. I wouldn't yeah. block in either of them yet. I'm pretty sure it was the 28th, to be honest. Yes, yeah, so I'm not surprised it's changed different, but I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. Go back to Drew and see what he says. Um, the, the group PIM, or well, he's not the PIM anymore, but Intel, he should be able to tell us. So, yeah, it's been really good. Lots of training going on. There's a, a bit changes in function managers um, going on, which has been really good. Um, uh, yeah, up until COVID, things were ticking along nicely. So, um, uh, the last thing that might be of interest to um, John, and I've already told, talked to John about this, but that gold rush. Music festival coming up next year if we're not out of COVID and we're able to have it. Um, but um, other than that, I don't really have anything else I'd, I'd want to highlight in there, um, unless there's any questions. Just on the, uh, I think it's on page 33. Obviously, there was the workshop, and there's been a bit of talk about it even today in the um, mural forum with the workshop that we attended. Uh, oh, yes. with the maps yes. on the 5th of July yes so that got fed in and there's obviously been some outcomes of where those maps are but that's never been shared back with that group is there have you got any more information on that Brett no it hasn't been fed back as that group as yet as far as I know um, it was pushed back up to that regional leadership group um, and onto the 
higher than that, but I haven't heard anything back myself, to be honest, either. Um, no, sorry, I can't give you any more information there. So, so they're just using those as an indication for, for what's possibly could be in the future? At this yeah, it's a little, a little bit different scenario to what we were talking about on the day, though. If it was just a Waikato regional lockdown, this is a, it's a kind of an Auckland Waikato regional, uh, Auckland Waikato region lockdown. So it's a little bit different, and it's in, in way, the way we're thinking. Um, but um, look, uh, who knows what government will do? They'll decide what they want to decide, and then at the end of the day, we'll just have to wear it and thinking. I could just perhaps give some clarity. Yeah. Now. I do sit on the regional leadership group. Um, so the, the maps um, will be dependent on the event and the data they collect at the day. So the, the work that was done was, I guess, um, to provide some, at that original meeting was to provide some input into when they do decide where the boundary will be, what are some of the considerations I'd like, you know, um, people within the Waikato to give. So um, the, they have prepared some um, draft maps with a sort of bit of feedback around the current event. Um, but again, they're very fluid because it'll depend on the data they get on case numbers, et cetera. So um, there are no hard and fast maps showing what the boundaries will be. I would imagine that if, if they're going to have a split announcement uh, or announcement uh, of a split in um, a little bit across the country um, later on today, that they'll be working on those maps based on their really good understanding of, of what the picture looks like now. But there are no maps that we can, I guess, have that are pre-warned uh, as to what the boundaries will be. Yeah, pretty good explanation, Get Langley, I think. And then, um, you know, I think the police were pretty happy knowing that um, we were all going into lockdown just, just recently after the three-day, because uh, they would have had a nightmare thinking about what, how, what checkpoints they were going to have to man. So a lot of it's come down to resource. And how much resources the police have to demand those checkpoints? <laughs> what are there any more questions for Brett? None. So uh, that brings us to our stakeholders uh, giving us an update on. On what they're up to, I see John um, there. Uh, John, should we start with you? And I'm not sure who else is there because I can't see on my screen. Sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so at the, uh, currently, we're just working through COVID. Of course, we've got an N triple C stood up at the moment, and um, that's moving down to Christchurch next week. Um, most of the management's working from home. Um, the crews are just following the current guidelines. Um, we are just watching our workforce at the moment because of having to stand people down for who have close contacts and uh, how we're going to manage that. Um, apart from that, we've had a couple of new vehicles in the area. We're under a management restructure, which will get announced uh, early next week, which will be adding more managers in the area. So that'll make it a little bit easier for us. And then we're starting our summer planning and with the concerts and and the one that Brent mentioned also is the gold rush, but that's just, there's also some other ones up further up the Coromandel as well that we have to look out for. And resourcing therein that is required over the summer. So we're just working on what's that, what that's gonna look like now. Great. Thanks, John. Any questions for John? <clears throat> no. Um, so, if there's anyone else there that I can't see, uh, just far right. away. No, we're all clear. No, Mark's there, I think. Mark. On Fiends. There was there. There he is, down the bottom. You there, Mark? Might have done mute, mute Mark. He was having trouble with um, with his connection because he tried to connect it on Skype. But I told him to try and connect it with Zoom, and he's had he's had his Peter uh, popped in, but he's there is no mark on the line. Oh, and this is Tinworth. Tinworth, try, try now. Can you hear me now? Oh, there you go. 
Here we go. Yeah, good good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Mark Tinworth for an emergency. Um, yeah, just for us, um, probably like everyone uh, with COVID, the, our main focus, given the last week anyway, is absolutely COVID. Um, we've also got a uh, national coordination centre stood up for an emergency as well as our region. And uh, basically, we're probably, like many others as well, we've had a number of um, contacts and secondary contacts uh, across the organisation, but uh, we're in the Eastern Waikato. Um, we're still able to uh, maintain our response. Uh, all our activities, our focus is really around keeping our people safe and their families and being able to provide a response um, from a foreign emergency perspective. And so I guess with that, we're limiting uh, exposure of, of foreign emergency personnel to other activities as well, just within that. So uh, overall, we've got a new structure as well. Um, it's been uh, a, a work in progress. It's due to stand up on the 27th of September. Uh, and what that means is uh, for the Waikato and Eastern Waikato, so Moko up to Maramarua, up to Port Jackson, will become one district. Uh, the district manager will be Daryl Trim. And then we have um, six groups uh, based uh, geographically under there. And so um, we've got uh, very quickly Shane Bromley will be the Western Seaboard of uh, the peninsula. Matt Cook will be the Eastern Seaboard. I'll be looking after Mata Mata Piako Hauraki. Uh, David Brown will be uh, South Waikato and Ellen Doherty will be Central sort of North Waikato with Blair Kiley looking after the career staff in Hilton. So that's sort of where we are there. Um, as part of what we've been up to as well, um, uh, you may or may not be aware that Waikato now has a has subs uh, coordinating committee. Uh, it's um, next meeting is on the 9th of September. Uh, and it's a, we're up to about our third meeting. Uh, and it's sort of fallen out of the uh, Waikato Emergency Services Coordinating Committee. And the idea there is to uh, look at, I guess, risks involving hair subs uh, within the greater Waikato area. And as, I guess, emergency agencies, what we would collectively do uh, to and can do to help sort of mitigate and manage those, um, mainly around probably uh, how we coordinate more than anything, because uh, we don't have a lot of time together, but um, that's just to let you know that that's in place. And that's it for me, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Any questions for Mark? No, oh, that's good. Thanks again. Anybody else there that I can't see to report? We got anyone from police on the line this time? No. Failing that, anybody, um, has anybody else got any questions? Duncan, Rodney, any comments? No, I'm all fine. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. I'm okay too. Any updates from uh, group Langley, from Kid? Um, no, not really. The, nothing to add to what um, I think you'll be getting through the, the, the daily updates from uh, uh, Julian or Mark. Mm. Um, I guess we're all we're waiting to to hear what the announcements are on this afternoon. Um, at the moment, um, and I think for the, the major, uh, for this event. Um, all the sort of the welfare and support that we were um, sort of involved with last time is being handled by the different government agencies this time. Uh, so unlikely that um, we will be called on in the near future, um, but um, we're um, ready and, and um, um, prepared should um, any of those, you know, the, the agencies that are meeting those welfare needs, et cetera, such as MSD, uh, food banks, if they, need, if they need support, if they need help, uh, well, then we're, we're um, having our teams ready to, to step up, but um, nothing required of us at this stage. Um, at a, the, um, out of Hamilton, there's a lot of planning going on in terms of, um, you know, what ifs if, if um, say, there is a, a boundary um, set that um, through, our, through our area or whatever, what, what do we need to do to uh, help and manage that? Um, we've given a little bit of support um, for the setting up of a vaccination centre at the event centre. Uh, generally, the CBACs are all being run by the um, 
front of um, uh, district health boards, uh, a lot of support there. Um, given the um, fact, that I think there's, there's well, there are no cases in the Waikato. Um, some, you know, seven to eight thousand tests have been undertaken, and there's been no positive tests, no, and uh, none of the wastewater treatment um, tests have shown any results. So you may find over the next uh, week that things quieten down a bit more in the Waikato, with the concentration obviously being a lot of effort in, in Auckland, where um, there is. Um, still a number of cases coming every day and the predictions are that they might get slightly higher over the next couple of days, just uh, what the model is the same. Thanks, Langley. Yeah, it sounds like there's a bit of an issue in Walkworth today, so I haven't caught up on that yet, but um, just uh, no doubt we'll hear about it at four o'clock. So Duncan has a hand up, Philip. Okay, Duncan, yep. Yeah, uh, Langley, just listening to your report, uh, I'm a bit surprised that we haven't had confirmation about the Coromandel area in terms of positive cases or not. There have been quite a few days now. Is that um, if you can comment or not? Yeah, um, so just, just as I said, there have been no positive cases. So all the test results have come back negative. Right. And I think there's been over uh, you know, about twelve or 1,300 tests in Coromandel itself. Uh, none, none have been positive. Which is very reassuring. That's quite amazing, really. Mm. Amazing. Okay. Good lucky. Oh, onwards and upwards. Hopefully, it'll stay that way and we can uh, get down to level three and two soon. Uh, on that note, uh, Paul, would you like to close the meeting with a, with a carrot key, please? Yes. Kia whakaere a te tapu, kia wāti o te ara, kia tūru ki whakataha oi, homie, huie, taikia. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, everybody, for your attendance. And um, keep safe, and we'll uh, catch up soon. Yep, and if you want to know if the line, the queue to the countdown is busy, just give me a call and I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Brett. Right, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, okay. everybody. Thanks Thank all. you. See you tomorrow. Yes. See ya. Cheers. Bye. All right.